Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over Section 9.5, which covers our uh, hypothesis test for the population proportion. So the previous hypothesis tests we've been doing so far have been on the population mean. Remember, the mean is based off of quantitative data that we collect. And uh, the population proportion is a statistic that is created from uh, qualitative data. So how do we test the population proportion or estimate the population proportion? We use the statistic p hat, which is the sample proportion. So this is going to be not a very long lecture because we've already kind of seen the steps of hypothesis testing, but we're just going to see the spe a specific statistic and the formula for z data um, to perform the test, and we'll just go over the critical value method and the p-value method steps again. So um, when we are estimating the population proportion, we are using, we're going to use an estimate of p hat. All right, we've done this before in confidence intervals. So if we have the unknown parameter p, we estimate that with p hat, the sample proportion. Now our null hypothesis is going to basically say that the p is equal to some number. Now remember, I know it's using less than or greater than here, but our null hypothesis will always be that p is equal to some number. For a lot of people in their projects, I chose that to be 0.5. And then for your alternative, you decided whether p, the, the percentage of whatever you were doing, is greater than half, less than half, or not equal. Um, but uh, p could really be any number, uh, but a lot of us for our project use 0.5. So how do we measure our strength of evidence? What's our first statistic when we want to test p? It's going to be p hat. Just like when we were testing the population mean mu, what do we collect? A uh, sample mean x bar. So really everything after that is pretty similar. Um, notice we can have a left, a right tail, left tail, or two tail hypothesis. This is going over critical values again, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Remember that if our uh, our alternative is a right tail, then our critical value is on the right side. If it's a left tail, our critical value is on the left side. And if it's a two-tail, we split alpha into two and look up the critical value that way. But the main thing is, is that we need to make sure our sample size is uh, meeting the minimum requirements. This is the same requirement that we had for the confidence interval. Step one, we always state the hypothesis. For the critical value, we look up z crit first using alpha. We use inverse norm for that. And then on step three, we calculate z data, and this is the new formula. Well, remember from uh, the last unit that the mean of all the p hats is p. So that's why we're figuring out how far p hat is from p. That's why we subtract these two. So p hat is our statistic, and we want to show that it's far away from the null hypothesis population proportion. And when you uh, compute this statistic, remember the standard deviation, we've seen this formula before with the confidence intervals in the previous unit. A standard we divide by the standard deviation that gives us the z-score so that's z data it's a different formula than what we've dealt with before but it's still a pretty basic formula that we've actually seen before it's just not the same as the mean one that we were working with in the last two uh, classes or the last two lectures lastly step four if z data falls in the critical region then we reject ho otherwise do not reject ho and we've had practice with that this goes over the p-value approach. Everything's the same. The formula is the same, except for that we don't look up z-crit. We just go from the hypothesis to calculating z-data. Then we find the p-value with technology. We can use norm CDF here. And then we remember the conclusion. If the p-value is less than alpha, then we can reject the null. Otherwise, we do not reject the null. So that's really it. The only thing new is the formula here. Okay, We're still going to follow the same steps. You can pick the critical value method, if you like, or the p-value method. The critical value method involves looking up z-crit using inverse norm and then calculating it as z-data and comparing that to z-crit to see if it falls in the rejection region. If you don't like that, then you can compute z-data using the formula and find the p-value, which is going to be you know, from z-data to e99 if it's a right tail test, from negative e99 to z-data if it's a left tail, and then depending on 
uh, what side Z data is on positive or negative, you take that to the corresponding E99 and multiply it by two for two tails, and that gives you the p-value. Remember, if you do p-value, if it's less than alpha, you reject the null. If it's greater than alpha, you do not reject the null. The only new thing here is the formula. So good luck. We'll see you in class.